Salutes, salutes. Welcome to the Real Big Fruit Podcast. I am your host, Big Fruit, the Michael Jordan of recording early in the morning, top of the morning. Happy Sunday to the people. Listen, y'all see the title, My Story of Killer Ben. Only a story like this can bring me back to YouTube. Like I told you, I'm on a hiatus and I'm only coming back for exclusive content. I'm doing other things. And right now it's all about Killer Ben and Four Green. So shout out to Four Green. Salute to J-Rock, the big homie just touched down. Yes, indeed, the big homie just touched down. I say J-Rock because not only is he a Four Green representative, but that is the big bro. That is the comrade. And that is Killer Ben's bro. So it's only right that I shout him out. Listen, man. My story of Killer Ben. My story of Killer Ben is going to consist of a lot of stories, rumors, and hearsay. Why do I say that? Because Killer Ben is a legendary figure in Brooklyn, New York. When I say legendary, I mean legendary almost like a myth you understand what i'm saying a lot of people heard of him never seen him wondered what he looked like if they've never seen a photo of him to this day the name is very 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 big in brooklyn new york so i'm going to do my story of killer ben and when i'm doing this story i need y'all to know and understand that a lot of pain was put in a lot of hurt a lot of suffering and i say this to say you live by the gun you die by the gun and i don't say that to be disrespectful i say that to be real because i know there's a lot of shorties out there listening and watching right now because they hear the name killer ben or big fruit you know how that shit go but anyway i'm giving y'all a message and i need y'all to understand man you live by the gun you die by the gun and that's no disrespect to Killer Ben or any other other fallen comrades. It's real. And we need these shorties to know and understand that it's real. And I'm here to give a message. Not only tell a story, but to give a message. Now, my story of Killer Ben goes way back for me when I was a shorty. You know what I'm saying? I ripped and ran in full green. Shout out to my cousin, Riley. You know what I'm saying? He should be on his way home soon. You know what I'm saying? When I was growing up, I used to be down in the fort with my cousin by Lake, down on the 48th Fleet Walk side. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Larry. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Richard and Charles, the twins. Shout out to Chucky. Rest in peace to E-Rock. I used to be down there. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I said rest in peace to E-Rock because E-Rock, E-Rock was like a superstar to me when I was a shorty because that was Larry Big Bro. Me and Larry was coming up together. I used to come down there, hang out with Raleigh, hang out with Larry, and E-Rock was a superstar. And on the strength of knowing E-Rock, I would see his bro, <laughs> which was Killer Ben. Ben was his boy. I used to see Ben. Didn't know him. Never said two words to him, but I used to see him. And like I told you, these dudes was like fucking superheroes to me. Coming through in the early 80s with all that jewelry on. That shit was fascinating. That shit was alarming. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, they was ghetto stars. And I used to rip and run through Fort Green, all up and down Myrtle Avenue, through Fort Green Park. And right there on that corner, that infamous corner, I used to see all these dudes. You know what I'm saying? The Killer Benz, rest in peace. 50 Cent, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Rap, pre-magnetic, rest in peace to rap. You know what I'm saying? I should see all that shit. <laughs> I used to see it. But I come from everywhere. You kept a child in a child's place. See, today they don't do that. We lost sight of that shit a long time ago, man. But I come up where you kept a child in a child's place. In the house <laughs> and in the fucking street. You kept a child in the child's place. So I was a child ripping and running. Though I was outside, I was still a child. 
and a child was kept in the child's place. So I didn't know what the niggas was doing, how the niggas was doing it. All I know is them niggas looked at like superstars to me, superheroes, and they name rung bells. The only person who I ever heard speak or I ever spoke to was Eva. May he rest in peace. But I used to see it. I used to come through and I used to see what they do. And Killer Ben name rung bells crazy. Like, and he wasn't this. And when you heard his name, Killer Ben, you would think of a big dude, an aggressive dude, a loud dude, and a very violent dude. That's not what you saw. <laughs> I saw a little smooth dude, quiet dude, didn't do too much talking, always had a smile on his face. So it was the total opposite for me. <laughs> I didn't get it. As a shorty, I didn't get it. Like he didn't he didn't look like this threat. But the name rung bells, and when he came through, son, niggas was spreading like the Red Sea. I seen this shit as a show. You know, so you talking 80, 80, 85, 86, I'm a shorty seeing this shit. Name ringing bells. I'm not hearing about what they doing and how they doing it. I'm just knowing every time I come through Fort Green, here on that corner, Trump tight on the jewels, calling shots. <laughs> I go away in 87, do my juvie. I runs into a guy named Taheem out of Fort Green. Yeah, I'm going there. Y'all know what it is. I'm going to keep it 100, right? I'm going to keep it 100. Fort Green watching. I runs into a guy named Taheem in, in Sparfield. And at the time, I'm a baby, man. I'm 5'2", 120 pounds, 13 years old. All these dudes, 15, 16 now, Tahim, he up in the, the, the crazy house. E6, bugged out niggas up there, fighting, acting crazy, taking Thorazine, working out. Niggas is on swole. Tahim got to be the biggest nigga in Sparford at the time. He out of full green. See, a lot of Sparford with me. He out of full green. So I'm mingling with these motherfuckers. They know little badass fruit. So I get to know who Taheem is, because if I'm not mistaken, I'm with the school with his little sister. So I get to know who he is and shit. I go off through my juvie. While I'm in my juvie, 87, 89, the year 88 come by. The homie K, I think KB, I think Killer Ben got knocked off for blowing at the 88 precinct. Yeah, the police in the 88 precinct. Yeah, the motherfuckers live across the street from me. Yeah, I'm going there. Yeah, yeah. The, the notorious story is the niggas ran down on Ben and Ben gave them niggas the business. Yeah, yeah. Ben went to prison for blowing at the police. Attempt at the police. Them, them, them suckers across the street from me, 88 precinct. I'm going there, man, because them motherfuckers was dirty. You know what I'm saying? They probably ran down on Ben with some bullshit. He had to defend himself. But Ben had the tip on police. 88, some shit like that. Tahim, when he was in Sparfield with me in 87, if I'm not mistaken, he had a body. He beat that shit. He goes home. If you know, you know. He go home. He does some bullshit. He does some real heinous shit. He commit a real heinous crime. Take the life of a child and her mother. And they were family to the big homie rap. Yeah, I'm going there. Y'all know what it is. And when Taheem took his ass to rack his salad, no more sparfing. I was hearing how the homie Killer Ben was chasing that nigga around. So now I'm hearing, yo, Killer Ben, not only in jail, I mean on the street. Rack his salad. The notorious C-74. Killer Ben chasing that nigga around. And this nigga was like this big somebody to me in Sparfit. But when I hear he on Rag Shadow, no, 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 Ben getting at that nigga. Not only is Ben getting at that nigga, but he did some crazy shit. So I'm definitely like, whoa. Or should I say he was accused of some crazy shit? You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Full Green is bugged out. 
not knowing years and years later, LG would be just as fucking crazy. You understand what I'm saying? But at the time, all eyes is on Fort Green. Fort Green is a melting pot. Shit is crazy down there. Ben got the temper on Port Beach. This nigga Taheem accuses some crazy shit. Ben chasing that nigga around on Ragged Sound, getting at that nigga. Like, real talk. So I'm hearing the nigga name Killer Ben, Killer Ben, Killer Ben. Years roll by. Polite come home from a from the wrong cake case. I gotta go here. I gotta go here. Polite come home. If you know, you know. I told the story about the big homie Ron King and LG. Polite comes home from that case. Remember they booked Polite, falsely arrest Polite, accused him of killing Ron King. Polite comes home. But while Polite was away on Racket Island, 88, when Ben was chasing Taheem ass around, Ben and Blight was holding it down. Light was fucking with Ben. Ben made sure he was good. And they was the best of friends from what I hear. I'm giving y'all what the streets got and what the streets used to put out there. A lot of this shit was real. A lot of this shit was false narrative. A lot of this shit had to be G-checked by niggas because niggas ain't know the fuck they was talking about. Like, I was around four green niggas that my generation, who used to run down on niggas, like, yo, you don't know what the fuck you talking about, keep niggas' name out your mouth. Like, I seen that. I heard that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Killer. Shout out to Rumble. Shout out to Vardo. You know what I'm saying? They used to put niggas in check. You know what I'm saying? About that shit. But I'm giving y'all what the streets and the prisons and the room is. I'm giving y'all this. It's on you to decipher what the fuck you want to hold on to, whether it's real, whether it's true, whether you, I don't believe that shit, because all these rumors shaped Killer Ben's legacy. Right? So, the rumor, the story, whatever the fuck you want to call them, has it that when Polite came through Rack Salad for that wrong cake body, niggas wanted to get at him. Polite leaned on Ben. Ben held the nigga down because Ben knew he ain't do it. The streets knew he ain't do that shit. Ben was like, nah, niggas ain't doing the nigga dirt. This is what we heard. So Ben held Polite down. Polite come home. Polite get right to it. Polite get right to it. Polite get right to it. Next thing you know, overnight, Polite on his feet. He rocking and he rolling. I come home 89. I came home February 89 to be exact. And when I came home February 89, Polite was rolling. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ben was still in Ragged Salad. I don't know what year he went up north. But Polite was rolling. And from my understanding, Polite was doing right by the brother. Polite was making sure Ben was good. A year later, shit went left. We got to go here because this is what shaped, this is what shaped this man's legacy. A year later, things went left. The rumor has it. Polite was supposed to do something for Ben. He ain't do it. Ben was disappointed, upset. They fell out. Now, when they fall out, then brother, mister, another legendary figure out of Fort Green, mister, mister took it upon himself, ran down on Polite. Now, at the time, like I told you, Polite and Ben was moving and shaking. They was cool. Even though Ben was locked down, Polite and Ben was all right. But when they fell out, I don't think Polite took it as a fallout because he was still moving and shaking down there in full green. And when he came through, Mr. Booked him. This is, this is, this, this, listen, man, I'm giving you legendary shit here. 
And if I'm wrong, if any of this shit I'm saying ain't on point, you got to understand, this is what the streets did to this story. This is what the streets did to this situation. The streets added shit. The streets left out shit. Like, but I'm giving you what I got. <clears throat> Mr. Bookman. And at the time, man, Polite was up. I mean, up, 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 up. Yeah, man, he was he was really up. And he wasn't playing no games. You understand what I'm saying? He wasn't playing no game. So after Mr. Bookdom, Polite handled their business. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers ran through full green looking for him. Shots got blown. Innocent people was hit. And the one that was hit that shaped this whole situation was when a bullet went through the door and hit Ben Little Brother. An infant, like a child. A child was lost in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, the people that was accused of doing shooting were four green boys. 90 and elves. They both did their time for that shit. They was convicted of that shit and the niggas did a whole lot of time. And we gonna come back to that. But anyway, shit go left, shots get flying, child get killed. This shit is crazy now. Yeah, this is that America's most wanted shit. I'm giving it to you. Motherfuckers ain't give it to you the right way. I'm giving it to you right, and I got the permission to do so. So motherfuckers be giving y'all stories and talking about shit for clout to, to, to make themselves look good. Nah, that ain't what this here. I ain't here for no clout. This shit I'm telling y'all, I done sat on the gates and prisons and talked about. I done sat six men to a group in the yard. We done had these discussions. This shit is old. I ain't looking for no clout. I ain't looking for nothing. This shit is old. I done told this story a thousand times to motherfuckers. I done heard it a thousand times from other motherfuckers. Like, this shit is old. But one thing I did do, I got the blessing to tell this story. The hood wanted me to do it. And them niggas told me get it right. <laughs> them niggas told me get it right. So I'm getting it right. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do my best with this one right here. You know what I'm saying? So... Shit went left, shots got flying, baby get hit, murder's most wanted shit, polite on the run, been in the penitentiary. This shit is crazy. Now Ben gotta go off and do this big while all this shit going on, man. Ah, that's something I never thought about. Everybody talked about what happened. Yo, yo, his little brother. I never had a conversation with somebody like, damn, what the fuck did Ben, like, what what you think he had to go through mentally and emotionally when all that shit went down? We know it's gangster. We know how, you know, what, he, what, what he's going to put on the street. Like, yo, it is what it is. But when it, in his solitude, Damn, I wonder what that felt like. I wonder what, what his thought process was like. You know what I'm saying? The shit was crazy. That was a crazy situation. But like I said, Ben had to go do off and do a bid like that while all that shit was going on. So you talk in the early 90s. So in the early 90s, while Ben was doing that bid, a lot of the homies and comrades of my generation, we start bidding. We start going up north. And dudes start coming across the legendary Killer Ben in the prison system. Me, myself, I never had the pleasure of doing so. We crossed paths and downstate of some crazy shit, and it was a ruckus about him being in downstate. But I'm going to tell y'all a story that an OG told me, and it was on point because when I crossed his path, it was exactly what the OG told me. I ran into an OG. 
He's my OG out of Jersey. Kabir, a.k.a. Sean Boy out of Jersey. Yeah, I fucks with all types of dudes. So when I came up knowing 9-4 to Clinton, and, and it was time to man up after that cat sacky shit, I fell in the graces of Shaquem Allah, rest in peace, and Kabir. They were both Muslim brothers, but they was about that life and they was about that action. So I was fucking with these dudes. And Mo Dog, you know what I'm saying? This was my crew. This was my family in Clint. And Kabir used to be like, yo, because he's from Jersey. So he used to be like, yo, man, you missed it when Killer Ben was here. It's like, well, yeah, I would have liked to meet him and shit. He was like, yo, when I met him, total opposite. And the OG Kabir used to tell me, yo, he was always the quietest dude in the room. He was sometimes the littlest dude in the room. But his presence was always felt in the room. So Kabir used to always tell me that. He used to be like, yo, man, shorties need to watch how he move because that's how you need to move. Like, you ain't got to be the loudest dude in the room. You ain't got to be the biggest dude in the room. Let's be about your business. And a lot of shorties today, they don't know that. But Kabir used to drop that shit back on me back in 9-4. Word. Yo, listen, man, Ben, Ben, Ben. I guess him and Ben, he met Ben and they hit it off. And he was really impressed with Ben's character. So he used to school me on Ben. But I never met Ben. But when I crossed this path in downstate, I'm telling you, Kabir was on point. It was like, I'm like, damn, all this hoopla about this motherfucker. And you wouldn't even think it. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of my homies and comrades, they got the pleasure of meeting the man, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get the pleasure of meeting. I met a whole lot of people that met him, though. So Ben go off, do his bid or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And uh, two of them boys out of Fort Green that I mentioned earlier, 90 and Ellsworth, they got pinched. They come to the system. But then it was another guy who got knocked off for the situation. Yeah, I'm going to go there. I got to go there. I got to go there. When, when Polite was doing his one-two, his right-hand man was Micah out of LG. Not really LG, side block, but we claim him. He peoples. He was family down there. Micah. Micah got caught up in that shit because of his name. Mike ain't bust no shots. <laughs> Michael wasn't fair. None of that crazy shit. But you know how that shit go. Guilty by association when we click. So Michael got caught up in that shit too. Michael ended up getting so slayed just like everybody else in the gang of time. Michael go off and do his bid too. Racket Allen, he was able to skate through. But when he went up north, things got different. And we're going to get back to that. <clears throat> so while Ben doing his bid or whatever, he eventually make parole. Ben go home. Now when Ben go home, everybody want to know because Polite, Polite still on the run, America's most wanted, right? Polite still on the run, America's most wanted. Because, yeah, he's still on the run when Ben touched down. Now, when Ben touched down, man, we heard so many fucking... I was in prison now. Now I'm in prison. Now when I'm in prison, 9-5, when Ben go home. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something about niggas in the yard. Niggas in the yard make up shit to entertain themselves. They will add shit. They will lie. They will cap. I'm telling you, whatever sounds good in the yard when them niggas smoking them sticks... I'm telling you, them niggas will add shit and shit will go left. So it's so many rumors, so many stories when it comes to this man's legacy. And I'm going to tell y'all some of these shits. Y'all going to laugh at some of them. Y'all going to hit me with that Arnold shit. What you talking about, fool? For some of them. I'm telling you, this is the shit niggas was creating. I was in the can. I wasn't there. I don't know none of these niggas. I'm just giving y'all the stories we had to deal with when this shit was going on. Brooklyn, this is for y'all. Man, Killer Ben went home. 
and you just start hearing all types of shit. Yo, yo, yo. Because remember, Polite's still out there. Murph's was wanted. He doing his one, two. Nigga, money up. He up, 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 up. I'm going to tell y'all the one fucking rumor I heard that to this day, I ain't going to lie, man. I'm like, uh, I don't know. It, it sounds funny, but I don't know. That shit might have happened. You never know. I'm going to tell y'all some shit I heard. I heard this one. Ben came home. You know, nigga show love. Boom, boom, boom. Niggas, yo, we going to the out. <laughs> this is some shit I heard. I, I, I don't know if this shit true or false. This is bullshit I heard. It's a couple of the homies. They go to Coney Island. Ben and the comrades. They say they walking down the boardwalk of Coney Island. You know, they chilling. Next thing you know, niggas start spreading out. Ben, like, he in a, he walking by himself. And the nigga polite walks up on him dressed like a chick. This is what, this is shit we got to hear in, in prison because niggas is so fascinated with this drama. This is, this is one of the rumors we heard. Polite walked up on Ben. So Ben actually got to see the man face to face. Yo, leave that shit alone. That shit ain't about nothing. If I want to get at you, I can get at you. I can have you any day. Leave that shit alone. Ah, ooh. And Polite went on his way and Ben went on his way. You hear that shit? That's one of the rumors we heard in prison. Now, me being me, like, yo, Polite was out there doing all types of crazy shit. Running around just like women putting work in. Who knows? He might have did that shit. Then I'm saying, man, ain't no way in the motherfucking world Polite on America's Most Wanted walking down the motherfucking ball walking Coney Island and Killer Ben just walk, walking down a, and get the fuck out of here. That's, you know, so it's like, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? But that goes to show you how fascinated niggas were with this drama. You see what I'm saying? So Ben goes home 9-5, whatever. He out there. He doing what he do. And he back on the set. You know what I'm saying? He came home to a real good woman. Shout out to Nick. I'm going to get to that. You know what I'm saying? I had the pleasure of meeting his beautiful wife. She was good people. She brought Ben home. She made sure Ben was good. And she's a great person. Beautiful, beautiful person inside and out. Shout out to Nick. So Ben came home, you know, he doing his one tour or whatever. And then it was the, 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 the notorious 1995 Sauce Awards at Madison Street Garden. Yeah. Now we all up north. Brooklyn is in the uproar. It's 9-5. B-I-G. It's all about B-I-G. I don't give a fuck how you look at it. East Coast, West Coast beef. I don't give a fuck. It was all about B.I.G. 9-5. They host the Source Awards at the Garden. Brooklyn. In the building. Now, we all in the can. We hearing the stories and the rumors. Yo, Brooklyn niggas, yo, ah. Rumor has it, man. Everything moving got booked. <laughs> Brooklyn niggas was in there booking everything. Yeah, name stamp and kill a big name on everything. Everything move. Everything get up. You know what it is. That's the rumors we heard. Yo, niggas down there booking everything, son. Or everything moves get booked. Allegedly, wrong nigga got booked. And it wasn't going to go down like that. This is what we hearing up no. Wrong nigga got booked. They stamp kill a big name on the jokes. Brooklyn niggas, yada yada, Brownsville niggas, Best Star niggas, Fort Green niggas. It's just crazy. Shots get fired. Yeah, shots get fired. Yeah, shots got fired. That's the uh the notorious situation that is allegedly fingered to the killer Ben's death. Allegedly, the Madison Square Garden robberies and Brooklyn niggas and Brownsville and Bed-Stuy, Killer Ben died. 
Sats got fired back in Brownsville. An innocent girl got killed. Dirty cops came to Fort Greene. Locked the brother Sunday Moses up. Shout out to Sunday. Freedom is a must. Dirty ass cop came to Fort Greene. Locked Sunday up. Accused him of being a shooter in Brownsville. Of retaliation. Shit just got crazy. And all this shit plays a part in Killer Ben's legacy. You understand what I'm saying? And it's crazy because nobody really know if any of these rumors are true. None of that shit. A lot of that shit transpired when I was in the can and I heard so many stories. But I'm going to tell you this, right? I was around 90 and Ellsworth, the two men who were convicted out of Fort Greene for that notorious shooting. I was around them. They did the majority of their time in Attica. They were standing 10 toes down. And it is what it is. But you know what's funny? I never asked them niggas nothing about that shit. I don't know, out of respect, I guess you just don't ask a nigga about his case. But I was around them dudes. And they were standing 10 toes down on they square. <laughs> I say that to say this because I was also around Micah, the one out of LG. And I gotta keep it 100, Sean. If I don't keep it 100, niggas would be looking at me crazy. Micah was a different story. Micah had to come through. Deal with that shit, man. Four Green Boys was a plan, man. Mike fell in a couple of jails. <laughs> Four Green niggas rung the bell on him. Mike had been poked up a few times behind this killer pin shit. This is all fact. This ain't no rumors and this ain't no cap. Micah, do not be mad when I speak the facts. This is, this is the truth. This is our truths. This is our history. Micah got poked up a couple of times behind that shit. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. And the sad part about it was Micah was not there. <laughs> Micah did not shoot nobody. Like, Micah didn't hurt nobody. But he was on the team, and he was the one dealing with that shit the most. That's the shit that was sad to me. You know what I'm saying? Because Micah wasn't no real fucking bad dude. He just had a bad situation. You know what I'm saying? So Micah had to deal with that shit. And I was around Micah. And I know Michael personally. I was with Michael in Green Haven and we used to talk about this shit. See, that's another thing about this YouTube shit and me getting blessings before I just go off. Some of this shit, son, I was there. I know these people. I know 90 and L's. We did time together in Attica. We stood the yard together. You understand what I'm saying? The same thing with Michael. These are the dudes that was convicted of this shit with Killer Ben. Sam, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I know these people. I'm not just running off at the mouth. Like I said earlier, shout out to Killer Ben's wife, Nick. I know her as well. Now, listen, man, the love for Killer Ben is real. That love for Killer Ben is so motherfucking real. Like I said, he came home to a beautiful wife. She did right by him. And when he passed, she put him away correctly. She buried Ben properly. Then when she moved on with her life, man, her love, that Fort Green love and respect for Ben, they ain't want to let her go. <laughs> Fort Green ain't want to let Nick go. Nick moved on with her life. She hooked up with another man. Money. Salute. Like I told you, I know these people. I broke bread with these people. This ain't cap. She moved on with her life, man, and I'm telling you, man, it was so much shit. Rumors about that. Uh, four green niggas mad at money. Money marry killer Ben White. Uh, it was just a bunch of bullshit. But it wasn't to be disrespectful towards Nick. It wasn't to be disrespectful towards money. It was just that they had so much love and respect for Ben. They didn't want to let her go. Because letting her go was letting Ben go. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, real talk. So shout out to Nick and shout out to her husband, Money. Money's a good dude. Money was a brother in the prison system who kept me on the street and narrow. Money's a brother in the prison system who taught me how to be a man and not a child. He was a great 
great big brother to me in prison. And Nick was a great big sister to me as well. On them visits and on them festivals, she should keep me in check and let me know. Because I know them, I know Nick since 98. Yeah, that's how long I know Nick. I know Nick since 98. I know Nick and Money since 98. And they together to this day. So don't get it fucked up. I know these people. Those are my people. You know what I'm saying? That's family. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. So Ben, Ben Love was real in the prison system, man. And Micah, whew, Micah had to deal with that shit, man. Micah had to deal with that shit. I, and me being an LG boy, I should be around the four green niggas. Them niggas know where I stand on that shit. I used to be like, damn, man, what the fuck, man? I got to leave Mike alone. You niggas want to try to hear that shit. I'm like, yo, Mike ain't going to do with that shit, you know? And then, 9-6, polite, allegedly got murdered right after Ben. Michael was like the only thing left to go at, man. And them niggas rolled that out. Michael whole big, man. You know what I'm saying? I hope them niggas don't fuck with Michael no more because Michael, leave Mike alone, man. Leave Mike alone. Real talk. But I say this to say, man, all this shit shaped Killer Ben's legacy. You know what I'm saying? The uh, uh the ripping and running in the 80s with ever being Rock Kim and all that shit. Uh uh Racket Salad up north coming home, that notorious shit with polite. The allegations with the Madison Square Garden shit, him losing his life, and the way he lost his life, son. Even the way he lost his life, like, allegedly a beep, answered the phone, go to the pay phone, niggas hit him at the pay phone, like, shit's crazy. All that shit is a movie, son. I told you, this killer Ben shit is real. His whole life was a movie, son. And you know what's funny? It started when he was a shorty, man, because I was a shorty. And he was, god damn, when I, what, E Rock? I had to be 10, 11, 12, E Rock, and it was like 14, 15, 16. Like, Ben was a shorty when he was out there like that, man. God damn. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, he was a shorty. Yeah. Yeah, he was shorty. I thought it was dope that they threw the um memorial up for him. I am so hurt and disappointed that I hear that they defaced it. That wasn't cool. But you know what is cool? If you ever got the opportunity, see, I have a personal photo from Nick. From Nick. If you ever had the opportunity to see his, his headstone, Killer Ben has a beautiful headstone. I have a personal photo that was given to me by his wife, absolutely. But he has a beautiful headstone. So if they deface his memorial, fuck him. He ain't deserve that. But if you ever get a chance, research or Google his uh, tombstone. It's a beautiful joint. They spent the grip, worked the mother. You know what I'm saying? So shout out and rest in peace to Killer Ben, man. He was a Brooklyn legend for so many reasons, man. But uh, he taught us a lot, man. He, For one, I can't stop saying it, and it's no disrespect to him or any other fallen comrade. Killer Ben taught us, you live by the gun, you die by the gun. You understand what I'm saying? But what he also taught us is sometimes our actions can affect the lives of our families our friends and our loved ones in ways we can't imagine. He taught us that as well. You understand what I'm saying? And um, I wasn't gonna jump on here and just uh kill a Ben because I'm not a clout chaser. I wanted to make sure Killer Ben's story be told with a message. Because Killer Ben was a, a good dude and he died a fucked up life. You know what I'm saying? He died a tragic way. Like, it, it was crazy the way he, we lost him. And he was a great dude. I've never, 
never heard anything bad about him. Like I told you, uh, I got a lot of homies out of Fort Greene. They, they were raised up under him. They know him. And I got a lot of comrades uh, from the penitentiary that was around him. I never heard not one bad word, sir. Not one. You know, maybe, maybe Taheem got some shit to say. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I never heard no bad shit about KB. You know what I'm saying? Killer Ben was a Brooklyn legend. He was a Brooklyn god. He was a Brooklyn king. And we're going to respect him as such. You know, and um, this one was for Fort Greene, man. You know, I know no Notion Avenue. Like, yo, now you got to do the polite story. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? Just like when Jada Kiss did the letter to Big, Mano says you can't do one without the other. He did the letter to Pop. I can't do one without the other. So in a rap, best style, understand the polite story is next. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? But this one was for Fort Green. This one was for Killer Ben. Salute to J-Rock. Welcome home. Shout out to Nick. Shout out to Money. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Killer. Shout out to Rum, shout out to Vardo, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy, Big P.I. <laughs> he told me, get it right, you know what I'm saying? This one was for Four Green, man, Work them up. Yo, yo, real, real raw, a.k.a. Mel Kwan, salute, you know what I'm saying? I know that was your boy, Killer Ben was your boy, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Fly Top. On that note, man, I'm going to get up out of here. This one was for Four Green. I fucks with you, and I'm going to drop this right now. Salute.